and uh, her husband Bamboo himself, you know, comes from a lineage of uh, ministry and also uh, a hip hop artist. Uh, today, I would uh, you guys are pastoring or evangelists, you know, that kind of thing, I guess. Yes, yeah. we are traveling missionaries. Traveling yeah. missionaries. Yes. Yeah. But yes. you also plant churches. We uh, planted a church in Uganda. And also, yeah, we, we, we run so many things in ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, we do travel a lot to ministry. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You guys are totally sold out then. You guys want to, you know, can you come closer a little bit together just so you can be a husband and wife? <laughs> no, it's just I want to make sure that you are you full the screen. Yes, yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, let's uh, actually uh, before uh, for 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 a lot of you get people that are be wondering. Uh, this is them actually when they got married. So I have this uh, out there. <laughs> this is your wedding day, isn't it? <laughs> yes, 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 it is. How long was that? How long ago was that? Uh, it's been three years. Okay. Yes, okay. Our, our marriage anniversary on 16th of February. Yes. This year, yeah. So, yeah. It's been three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you guys meet? How did you guys meet? We met through a. Uh, uh, a friend, a, a friend of mine, who uh, you know, after I, I released um, some of my gospel hip hop, uh, a friend reached out to me. Uh, well, I, I didn't know him at the time, and he just reached out to me on Facebook, and you know, it's one of the you know the Facebook public page, so I get thousands of messages on there. So it's uh, you know how I even responded to his message was just you know by divine providence because. I get thousands of messages on that page and, and you know I can't possibly reply to everybody but I happened to check his message and he happened to be a, the son of a minister who's located in Kisumu and his father's mm -hmm. name is Silas Owiti <clears throat> the archbishop Silas Owiti of Kisumu and he was you know very well known by quite a few um uh American uh, ministers and evangelists like TL Osborne and uh yeah, and, yeah. and Redmond Bonk he had come you know and so uh, when they come to Kisumu, you know, he's the, he, he was the, the local uh, uh, minister whom they would li liaise with. So his son, uh, Silas Owiti's son is called Tommy Owiti. And Tommy <clears throat> reached out to me and then, uh, he's, you know, we began just WhatsApping and talking back and forth. And then he sent me a clip of Erica. She, she was ministering somewhere. And uh, he just sent me a, so a short clip. And I said, wow, I want to hear more, you know. And... Um, and then he said, uh, "Yeah, he she happened to come to Kisumu, and um, he sent her. He sent me her contact, and then I texted her. And you know, uh, well, long story short, three years later, you know, three or four years, yeah, later, four years later, four years later, <laughs> we're married. So yes. Yeah. yeah, yes, I happened to be. At, I was at at the time. I was meditating on Genesis two twenty four. Therefore yes. shall man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. And so the events transpired that brought about, you know, what the word of God promised. And that's how we met. Yeah. yeah. I, I met him through Tommy. Tommy, uh, I met Tommy when I had gone to minister in their church. They have many churches, like over a hundred churches in, in Kenya. So they would invite me every August because they had a, a big conference and I would be testifying. So it is through my ministry that Tommy got uh, inspired to also start serving because it's one thing to be a pastor's child and it's another thing to be a minister. So he did not feel like um, he, he wanted to, to do ministry, but after he saw what I was doing and by then, I was serving God, but but I wasn't doing well financially. But I would serve God in in every in all kinds of situations, and He would see the challenges I was going through. So it's it's out of that that He was inspired to to start ministry, and uh, I, I invited Him to come to Uganda. So it's during that time that He invited um, my husband, and uh, we we used to pray together, and we went on missions together. So after ministry is when he proposed, and, mm. and that's how the journey began. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is yes. three years later. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, let's let's start with you, Erica. Just you know, a bit of a uh, background around you. Let's not even because I'm I'm sure a lot of people are familiar. Maybe there's some people that are not familiar with your story, so mm. I don't want to. Uh, not include the people who are not familiar with your story, you know, uh, yeah. because they are, they, you always meet people that are not familiar with the story and it's always good for them to hear some part of it. Uh, how was it like for you growing up and how did you got initiated into uh, the whole world of uh, witchcraft? Well, um, I was born in a Christian family. My dad and mom were born again and uh, they were married. They got married in uh, 1990. And then um, after, after in 1991, they gave birth to me. So uh, my dad, my dad comes from a family uh -huh. where there is so much witchcraft. Uh, my grandparents, my, from my great grandparents, they were high level sorcerers. I'm talking about people who, who had the abilities to fly, change into uh, one of my great grandparents would change into a leopard, he would turn into a snake. They had, um, they had powers. So my grandmother coming from that kind of family, she was a high level sorcerer. Uh, she was controlling East African Uganda, not uh, physically, but spiritually, because uh, we always tell people life is spiritual. Whatever happens to us physically is a, a result of what has taken place in the spiritual realm. So there are principalities and powers that are ruling in, in, in high, in heavenly places. And uh, the enemy knows, Satan knows that even as, in as much as he tries to fight uh, people living on this planet, they are here illegally. The reason as to why we have authority in this in this world is because of the body that God has given us to have dominion in this world. So the spirits know very well that they cannot function effectively without uh, without help of a human being. So what they do, they enter into covenants and they promise uh, human beings, they, they, they promise them power, fame, wealth, success, as long as they can yield their bodies to be vessels of of those spirits because a human being can uh, the human being has the ability to 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 get to be possessed by spirits that rule an entire place or an entire continent that is how big our bodies are if your body can contain the holy spirit then who the, and of which the holy spirit is god then just yeah. imagine the number of demons your, your your body can contain if it if the holy spirit is not in the body so now my grandmother Coming from that family where there was high-level sorcery, she was um, she was she was now controlling the principalities of Eastern Uganda, and now she, looking at me as as her as the next generation, the person she wanted to pass over her powers to, I was supposed to be greater than my grandmother. So she, uh, my dad, coming. So, so it was something that was in your family, uh, yes. maybe from your grandmother's side. Yes. Yeah. So now. My dad got saved, but he didn't know the powers that he was battling with. A brief background of how my dad was conceived. My grandmother was only having girls, and she wanted to have a boy because she was in a polygamous uh, family. And mm. boys inherit in Africa, many in many traditions, is the boys to inherit the wealth. And if you only have girls, then you will not have uh, a share in, in your husband's properties. So now my grandmother was so desperate to have a boy and she went to she went to a shrine where she entered into a covenant with three demons and that's how she was able to conceive my dad when she went back home and and my dad came as a result of a covenant that my grandmother had entered into with those spirits that and in that in that contract that she signed with the demons was at, at a certain age my dad was supposed to go now for a full initiation and all the children that were coming from my dad and the men in the family were supposed to serve those satanic altars they were supposed to work with those spirits so now uh, he didn't know the the repercussions of what the mother had done by the grace of God, he just gave his life to Christ. And for some reason, our grandmother hated him. And uh, so he had to leave uh, his home and start a new life in another village where he met with my mom. 
And now they started serving God, but they didn't know that they were dealing with covenants. There were covenants in their lives that had to be broken. So now, uh, and dad, as far as he knew about his mom, he knew that the mom was a herbalist because we would have politicians, uh, people in business areas, people who are very influential, uh, parking in my grandmother's compound, going to seek for power. But my dad didn't know the, the, the level at which uh, my grandmother had gone and he didn't know the the consequences of what my grandmother was doing because he would just see her mixing herbs and uh, helping people uh, find solutions to their problems. He thought she was just a herbalist or a gifted yeah. woman. Yeah, so uh, later it is after my deliverance that his eyes were opened to realize that the mother was deep into witchcraft. So now uh, with all that said, uh, when I was born, my dad, my dad dedicated me to God because as a Christian, he wanted me to serve God. He never wanted me to, to serve in the kingdom of darkness. What's, he, what's your position in the home? Are you the first child, second? I'm the first, I'm the first born. Okay. Yeah. So when my mom was giving birth, my dad was there in the same, in the same room. So I landed in my daddy's hands. And the first thing he did was to pray over me and dedicate me to God. And uh, he wanted me to serve God. He, actually, it's my dad who named me Erika Mukisa. So Mukisa means blessing. And they said, you'll be a blessing to, to many. So my grandmother wanted to be present during that time. But because of prayer, she delayed to come when my mother was giving birth. And I believe if she was present when my mom was giving birth, she would have initiated me immediately mm. so now after my dad uh covenanted me after my dad uh, covenanted me to god i i stayed with my parents for two months and uh my grandmother visited when she visited she was so surprised to see that uh after my dad defied uh, after my dad uh rebelling against her you know not going for those rituals my dad was doing well financially so she said, how can Emma be financially stable, you know, after rebelling to the gods? And uh, after two months, my dad lost everything and we found ourselves going back to the village. You know, I, I grew up in, um, like when I was born, my dad had everything. He was traveling nations, he had connections, he had a very good job. So within two months, it, two months were enough for him to lose everything that he had. So now we went back to square one and we found ourselves going to the village where my grandmother was. And that was the beginning of, of, uh, of my life getting exposed to satanic uh, attacks because uh, she had access to me. She was providing everything for me, starting from maybe the soap, lotions. My grandmother was in the village, but she had, she had money and, uh, she, she uh, because she was providing everything that I needed, she she now my parents trusted her. They thought that she she loved me more, you know, so much being the only granddaughter. But now she used that as a an opportunity to initiate me into witchcraft. She started uh, covenanting. One time my mom found her cutting my hair and she said, why are you cutting my baby's hair? And she said, I want to protect her from her enemies. My mom kept wondering, why is she doing all these things, cutting my child's hair, cutting the fingernails? And in so doing, she was getting a point of contact. She was now opening up my life to this uh, satanic covenant that she was What's, in. What is it about satanic covenants and hair? Yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, what the enemy does, he, he, he needs something that, that can, uh, like a legal, something that can connect him to, to that person. Or uh, like, for example, your garment, he will look for your hair, your fingernails, because it, it carries your DNA. So now when, when they get something that is connected to a person, either your photo, your, your, your garment, because your garment represents the anointing on your life. And they, when they take the hair or the fingernails, they take your DNA. And now they take it to the altar and then they perform rituals. And when they perform those rituals, they directly affect you. You don't even need to be there when they are performing the rituals. You can even be in the U.S. when they are performing rituals in Uganda. But because those, those things are connected to your life, they start affecting you. 
you're in the US, but the witchcraft from Uganda is affecting you. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's what she did because she knew my, there's no way my mom would allow her to take me to her altars. So she just needed a point of contact, something that is very directly connected to me. And that was of course my hair and my fingernails and um and photos she had co connections to my clothes mm. she was buying for me clothes so my parents didn't know wherever she was getting the things that she was giving me from food because people also covenant people through food yeah so uh so much that was done to me during that time when my dad was not financially okay and uh it it, it happened to when i was two years and uh, from there my parents, my dad managed to struggle and uh, get us out of there, out of the village. And uh, it is while we were out of there that my life now began to go from bad to worse. Because of the, the doors that had been opened in my life, I, be, I began to fall sick all the time. You know, children are supposed to bring joy to their families. But now if a child is covenanted, Instead of bringing joy, the child is used by the enemy, first of all, to steal the parents' finances. If that child is falling sick all the time, the parents uh, are spending a lot of money in hospitals just to save this child's life. And I was that kind of baby who was always sick because of the covenants I had entered into because my grandmother wanted to cripple my dad financially so that he can now compromise. And that's the system the enemy does. Once he puts you to a point where you can compromise, then it is easy for him to take your soul. And that's why Jesus says that, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Many people that have compromised, that have compromised, that have sold their souls, have compromised because they are desperate. So, uh, to, to, because my testimony is long, I need to... to now <laughs> yeah, before you continue, let me just bring in... Uh your husband here and just do you relate to this <laughs> you know for you uh from your experiences now as an as, as a minister or growing up where you grew up or you know just do you how do you relate to this some of the some of the things that she had experienced very early in life oh absolutely um yes you know, I, I began to realize, you know, that life is very spiritual. Um, while I was still in the US um, in the music industry, you know, and I was I was writing music for Convict Music, um, for Akon and, um, and, you know, I was just there for a very short time, but I think the Lord wanted me to be there so he can, so he can show me uh, yeah. how entertainment and how the industry is run and how it is governed and how that life is spiritual and that, a lot of these entertainment uh, stars and celebrities we see are in, are in deep covenants and they go through rituals and they sacrifice and, and they do all of these things behind the scenes and then they show the glitz and the glamour on camera and, and you know, they fool the world. But behind the scenes, you know, they have a huge mansion, but they don't sleep at night because they can't sleep at night because demons choke them. And, mm. and they're going through all kinds of torment. And I, you know, I would hear story after story after story and you know um and i in hindsight i looked at my own life um growing up in the u.s and some of the things that followed us as children you know i was just a young i might have been no older than 12 years old when cancer uh a tumor you know formed in my in my upper palate in my gum mm -hmm. and you know i was I, I was becoming deformed you know and it made my teeth crooked and it I was I was going to school and you know public school in America is you know kids can be uh, very brutal <laughs> to say the least you know if you're deformed in in public school in America you know you will not hear the end of it you know make fun of you yeah they will insult you so I was going through all of this and I'm wondering you know why me why 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 is this happening to me you know and I happen and I just happen to be the guy who's from Africa you know to 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 add insult to injury <laughs> you know so um but in hindsight I saw wow a lot of these things that just showed up in my life were extensions of curses and these curses, you know, there's no sin that I had committed to speak of. I was just a kid. I must have been 11 or 12 years old, you know, just growing up like any other kid. But now, you know, where does cancer come from in a kid? Where does, you know, where do, where does all of this, you know, these events that were transpiring in my life, where do they come from? 
And when I and I realize that generational curses are real, you know, mm. um, when the word of God speaks in Exodus chapter 20, verse four and five, especially the fifth verse, where the Lord says, I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. generation. Of yeah. yeah, of them that hate me. In other words, those people who uh, engage in idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, visiting palm readers, visit, you know, even anything as it, it can seem small, but you know, even, you know how people toss coins into water fountains and make a wish and yeah, things yeah. like that. That is idolatry, you know, that is wit, that is participating in witchcraft. Those are marine spirits that people are participating in. And if you do this, little do you know, you may get a favor from those spirits. They might grant you a favor, but what you don't realize is there's a fine print of that contract. And the fine print is that the enemy will have definite access to your children and your children's children to the third and fourth generation with a myriad of curses, a myriad of, of different types of curses, diseases, misfortune, all mm. manner of, you know, and once you as have established one covenant with the enemy, he will use it to the fullest. An altar will begin to project monitoring spirits at your life. They will monitor you, your children, your children's children to the third and fourth generation. And they will, they will enforce that covenant. And so the events that transpire in your life, whether it's poverty, whether it's sickness and disease, whether it is lack, whether it is misfortune, whether it is rejection, whatever the case may be, these familiar spirits that come, that stem from a covenant that came from your forefathers that you might not have even known about. You never even met your forefathers three and four generations ago. Yet that covenant is still speaking in your life today. And salvation alone this is insufficient to handle that, uh, to, to take care of that covenant. Because yeah, that, that's, that's, that's actually, the, that's actually an area that I want to really talk about. Because sometimes we think once we get saved, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, everything is just going to be okay. And to be honest, sometimes I do not blame people because that's what we hear from the pulpit sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, from pastors, from prophets. Like everything mm -hmm. is going to be okay like overnight but mm -hmm. this doesn't happen overnight isn't it mm -hmm. no, the no. deliverance is not something it's not magic it's mm -hmm. not magic um those those covenants and those altars must be dealt with so your salvation will get you into heaven once you leave this body and you and you enter into the spirit realm and after your body has died, you enter into heaven because of that salvation, because of that sacrifice that Jesus paid with his life upon the cross of Calvary. Mm. Once given your life to Christ, you enter into heaven. Mm. However, the quality of your life while you are still on the earth yes, is yes. laws, yes. ordinances, and protocols which have been set by the Lord. In the Old Testament, they are written. And Jesus said, think not that I've come to do away with the laws. I've not come to do away with them, but to fulfill them. So Jesus gave us a way of how to deal with these ancestral curses and these uh, misfortunes and these uh, covenants and altars that our ancestors entered into. So that was part of the reason why he came. He's given us a way of how to deal with them. But when I was a, a young man, I had no idea about these things. So I was dealing with covenants and, and altars and uh, all kinds of things that were afflicting my life. Uh, and I had no idea why they were coming. And here I am, a young man, deformed, not knowing that life is spiritual and not knowing that there were altars and covenants that had legal jurisdiction in my life. And, uh, you know, uh, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2 says, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Mm. So no curse, no sickness, no disease, no misfortune without can come to you without a cause. That means without a legal loophole or a legal opening, the curse will not enter your life. Right, and so, right, right. And so, right. yeah, those were afflicting me from a young age. And uh, it was when the Lord began to educate me 
you know, the, over years, it was not uh, an overnight thing. It took, yes, you know, it's never going to be overnight. And I like what, the, what you said about the salvation. Salvation is an entry. It's you know, ticket. yeah, yes. it's, it's, it's a ticket. You you yeah, get yeah. into it. So so you're in this room now, uh, mm -hmm. and then you decide what you what you pick in the room. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. why you cannot. If you're a drug addict, you get mm -hmm. saved. The addiction is not just going to go away. It seldom happens that way. Maybe mm -hmm. once. It's very rare, you know. But yes. you would have to begin to deal with this to get delivered and also to take authority, you know, yes. which is very important. So salvation in itself, get you there. it's not like it's a good way. It's a starting point. Just like Jesus, you know, he preached the gospel of salvation. People get saved. But then he picked the 12 to disciple them. Just so mm -hmm. they can have a lifestyle, you know, and discipleship is just having that lifestyle and saying, look, hey, this is how we do it. This is how you walk, you know, in righteousness. This is how you walk in obedience to God. Uh, but mm -hmm. if you're just saved without getting that kind of discipleship, it's never going to happen. But mm -hmm. for you, uh, Erica, back to you now. Yeah. Obviously, you got initiated into the world of witchcraft and sorcery without really your knowledge. So yeah. they didn't, your your grandmother didn't get your permission to get you in, but then mm -hmm. now you are in anyway. And we yeah. also have a lot of family people, some of you guys are watching, where you've been initiated into something that, that you they never really got the permission. Like you uh -huh. say in early run, bamboo, where it was like, you know, it, it's like a generational thing. Maybe mm -hmm. three generations ago, they went into a covenant that included you Mm. without permission yes so you see yes. things happening so now you are there without your permission obviously because it's an evil world witchcraft and all that what was the first you definitely you were going to be given a task to go do what were mm -hmm. some of the tasks that you were given go do this go do that go cause this havoc here go do that mm. uh, now that first initiation because uh it's a process now the first initiation just opened up my life to curses like sicknesses you know we are not supposed to to be sick but it's the enemy who who sends the sicknesses to us because that is part of his ministry the bible says he came to steal kill and to destroy so he'll kill through sicknesses through wars and all other calamities that some of them are even created even some sicknesses uh mm -hmm. designed laboratories so now uh, and then they are brought to us because uh, the people who make those uh, bacteria and viruses yeah, and we're, we're, we're gonna talk about that later and you have to remind me you know you know sicknesses <laughs> yeah. that are created in laboratories you know i yeah. hope you guys are listening you know so yeah. maybe we consume a product or we use a product obviously mm -hmm. in our bodies but then mm -hmm. it was created behind it is witchcraft and then it is you know disease is coming onto us but just go ahead yeah, so now that first initiation just opened my life up to attacks and sicknesses. Now, uh, it, it was a process. So uh, when I was eight, because my parents were not doing well financially, uh, every holiday they would send me and my young brother. Uh, after some time, they gave back to my little brother, Evans, and uh, he was also falling sick. All the time we were falling sick because of those covenants uh, that my grandmother had initiated us into. For, for my brother, it wasn't so serious because she was not concentrating on him. She was concentrating on me because she wanted mm -hmm. me to inherit and take on her witchcraft. So uh, when I was eight, my mother took me to visit my grandmother. And uh, it is during that time that now she took me deeper into satanism and by the end of the holidays at her place i was a high level sorcerer now i was controlling uh, principalities of, of eastern uganda but before i got there uh, I, I want to tell you how she initiated me now at eight because it started at two opening up my life to attacks nightmares i was always crying i was i was never a happy child at home mm. and i was never bringing joy to my parents because all the time they were running to hospitals trying to save my life so they were frustrated because of me now at eight when my grandmother had a full access to me she took me to a graveyard where they buried uh, family members uh, who were deeply rooted into witchcraft and when she took me there 
that's when I knew that uh, to that this world is not the it, it doesn't uh, it's not the way we see it. It, it goes deeper than what we see. Uh, what is limiting us from seeing spiritual things is the is the is the is the flesh. The flesh is limiting us from from doing uh, supernatural things, from from traveling. You see, when you're out of this body. You can you you can be in Kenya and see what is happening in in America, and it's just a matter of you thinking. The spiritual realm travels faster than the physical realm. So now, I was taken to this graveyard, and I didn't know that it was a portal uh, where my grandmother goes to travel to the spiritual realm. So she took me to this graveyard where they even buried her mother, who was also a high level sorcerer. And she began to name the lineage, our family lineage. I am a daughter of so and so, so and so, who was faithful to you. And now I am bringing my granddaughter that if I die, all the spirits of our ancestors will rest on her and you begin to work with her and that she will be greater than me. And her generation also will bring forth greater men in this kingdom. And as she was naming the lineage, uh what what scared me the most because uh there in our family they 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 would bury them in a house uh those high level sorcerers were buried in a house there is a, a house that they built there are so many graves in that house as a child i thought maybe she's mourning for her you know her relatives she's going to mourn for them i didn't know that by sprinkling water and 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 herbs on those graves she was uh opening up uh portals that so that we'll be able to travel into the spiritual world so now uh we moved to all the graves in the house in that house and then we went to the final grave where they buried her mother and that is when i had voices coming from the grave and i i felt like we had now we, we were now moving from this planet into another planet that I had never seen before. She was opening up my life into spirituality, into traveling, what they do, what they call astral projection. The sorcerers have the ability to travel from this physical world into the spiritual realm and then come up with ideas. And uh, those wizards, people call them, um, G they, they, they are, people worship them because if they travel in the spiritual realm and they come up with a song that, that is going to trend all over social media and, and, and you know, people, people, everyone is going to fall to that song. They are going to dance to that song. You know, they don't know how this person came up with the idea. Some people have the ability to travel in the spiritual realm and get supernatural ideas. They invent things. They invent uh, vehicles. They invent, they come up with ideas. They make companies and they come up with new technology. Uh, every time you see uh, people being worshipped and uh, praised for being brilliant and they are not, they are not pointing their success to God, they know that there is a spiritual power behind their success because life is spiritual. It doesn't just happen. And mm. even money, money is also controlled by 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 the children of, of the enemy because Satan has his own seed, he has his own children that manufacture and they control the financial system if you're a Christian. And then uh, all of a sudden you begin to do well financially, the enemy will come after you, after your businesses, after, you know, unless you're, you're hiding everything in, in prayer, you know, unless God has put a hedge of protection around your finances, it's very easy for a person to go down within a twinkle of an eye because they, they, they monitor. Once you begin to, to excel in the area of money, they begin to investigate. They begin to, find, to, to try to find out who is this person. Why is she going beyond this line? There is a certain line they have they have drawn for people to to excel and not to go beyond, unless if they are they if they are representing what they stand for. Even with success, there is a certain level of success you will not go beyond unless if you're deeply rooted or, or covenanted to an altar. Now, depending if God has the ability to make you excel and go beyond that line and, and be blessed beyond the curse. No matter what they do, they cannot bring you down. But again, for Christians who don't understand that life is spiritual, they end up getting frustrated. They say, I, I am doing well, I am so brilliant, I have what it takes, but I don't go beyond a certain level. It's because they, 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 they don't know the powers that are uh, coming against them. So now when my grandmother, uh, when my grandmother performed a ritual on her mother's grave, 
I felt like every time, everything to do with this planet had ended, even the time. I felt like time on this world is what makes everything slow. In the spiritual realm, there is nothing like time because the devil knows he doesn't have time and uh, things are traveling very fast. So the time in this, in this world for me ended and I traveled now into another world with my grandmother and through the graveyard. And when we traveled into another world, I found myself meeting with, um, with my ancestors. And I, I re that's when my eyes opened to realize that we come from family trees and every person is attached to a certain family tree. And mm. depending on the covenants that ha have been made in that family, people are struggling. You find like in a certain family, the, every family has its own strength and its own weakness. You find that uh, maybe they are all doing well financially, but they don't they don't live beyond 40. They they all, at 40, there has to be something that comes in and then they will die. Or in that family, they don't give birth to, to boys. They only have girls. Unless if someone has decided now to seek for help. Uh, and in terms, when I talk about help, I talk about spiritual things. When maybe if you're born again and you start praying and, and, and trusting God for, for maybe a male child in your family, there is no male child and start praying, God can reverse those curses. He can set you free once you go through deliverance. So now it is through that that now I realized that I was coming from a generation of high-level sorcerers. And they were so happy to see me there because they knew that I was going to do exploits. I was going to be greater than them. And now they began to give me instructions. And uh, they told me that at a certain age, they would be able to reveal to me what exactly they want me to do. But they introduced me to the angel of death. And now it was my first time now to meet with the angel of death. A person will ask, how does the angel of death look like? Yes. The, yeah. Uh, before I even describe how the angel of death looks like, I'll describe how the world of the dead looks like, where, you know, those people who die prematurely because of iniquity, you know, the, the, the people who are supposed to live, let's say, from uh maybe you're supposed to live from from uh, from when you're born to 70 and because of the wickedness the high level wickedness the person has god cannot permit them to live to that fullest uh to 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 the to the time appointed time that he has created them to be so now they die before the appointed time and because they are they, they die and they are they are full of wickedness the enemy continues to use their spirits you know he continues to use them for wickedness until their expiry time and when they they expire now they are destined for for hell because the wages of sin is death so they are destined they, they, they and, and one thing i also want people to know is that uh every time we think that when a person dies immediately they go to hell fire uh, the Bible talks about uh, the uh, hell and the people in it, and Satan being thrown into into the lake, uh, the, the the lake of fire on Judgment Day, and it, it describes that as the second death. Now there are prisons where where those souls are caged and they are tormented, where they are burned, they are they are afflicted, they are beaten and tortured by those evil spirits, and they are used for whatever reason the enemy wants to use them because they have already given their lives to the enemy, so he's in full control of, of their of their spirits of their souls so now um uh, when i i met with this angel i before i talk about the angel of death i saw that that world it was very dry it's like a desert or a wilderness that does not have life even the trees i was seeing the family trees they were cast to a point that everything on it is dry the only the only uh support it has it's maybe the roots that are in deeply uh, rooted into that soil and they are strong but apart from that everything there is dry no life nothing like water nothing and then uh the angel of death he he's of course angels are in in structure they are more bigger than human beings in structure they are they are like more of giants compared to human beings but they can also uh come to uh, uh our size they can they can this they can uh reduce. they can reduce themselves to mm. our size right uh, if depending on the mission that they have and they can also decide to look like us to 
to uh, and then we it's difficult sometimes to identify that this is an angel because when they come some of them come to this planet on missions so when they come it uh, sometimes if a person is not a person's eyes are not spiritually open they will never they will never notice that there is an angel or that that is an angel it, it just takes god to open a person's eyes and and make this person understand that this one is not a normal uh, a normal human being this one is not from here this mm. person is another planet so there are fallen angels and there are angels that come from the kingdom of god and the angels that come from the kingdom of god are sent by god and they are sent they are sent to minister unto us now the angels that come from the kingdom of darkness are sent to destroy our lives they are sent to fight uh humanity they are sent by satan because satan hates man because man is created in the image of god and according to satan he feels like whatever man has he would be the one to, to to own everything the power the the this planet that god has given us he has given us dominion over this planet he has given us uh, we are ruling with christ in high places satan wanted that place he wanted he even wanted to go and be greater than god he wanted to be worshiped so now when he looks at the privileges that man has first of all we have a body and this body is what envies satan the most because for them as long as they don't have a, a physical body they can never do anything on this planet successfully so they need to always borrow our bodies that's why they are they are now trying to invent bodies that can that can stay on this planet and those bodies are robots they are trying to create robots and uh, and see how they can use these robots and reduce on on uh on the the reduce on our population i think you've been hearing them talking about reducing on the population and they come up with all measures to reduce on on uh, on on our population because they are afraid that if man is increasing on the surface of the earth it will be very difficult to get rid of man so they they want they want to reduce on our population as much as possible and create and create their own things things that yeah. can now have, yeah have influence on man and even computerize the remaining uh man they, they they want to chip everyone so that they they can be controlled by the internet they can be monitored they they want to to find a way of um of controlling man and 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 having dominion over man taking man's place because god has given us that position now uh when i met with this angel of of death he was looking like a surprisingly like one of uh the former popular uh king of pop uh, musician and and he was i, I didn't know that this uh, uh angel of death was was also musical i didn't know that uh that some artists by then i was so new so i didn't know that some artists have entered into a covenant with the devil for fame for power uh you know, to have influence to 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 rule in this world so um this end of death came and uh, he approached me and he told me they had taken me there earlier at a tender age because of my my parents commitment to serving god and they knew that if they had not taken me earlier my parents would have uh taken me deeper into the things of god and that is what they did not need so he began now to to teach me now about the kingdom of darkness and how it operates at the end of death told me that this kingdom is built on blood and he began to reveal to me the power of sacrificing blood and uh and why they 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 so much insist that when you're uh, entering into a covenant or you go to their altars you have to shed blood he told mm -hmm. me that what they what they are interested about in blood is 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 actually not the blood itself but it is the life force that renews their strength for us we don't have to do all those covenants all those sacrifices because Jesus Jesus paid the price for us he died that we may live by his stripes we were healed now the people in the kingdom of darkness when they get a calamity like sickness for them to be able to go through that calamity they have to shed blood and when they shed blood they renew their covenant with those spirits and then they empower them so they will be sent to sacrifice virgins because of their innocence they sacrifice babies they will sodomize them they do so much 
uh, especially those people who are ruling in this world, they, 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 they have so much to do with child sacrifice because children have a wide uh, or a, a bigger lifespan compared to the adults. And then also the innocence of those children is what, it, is what gives them, you know, the ability to live beyond their, beyond their time because they are supposed to be expired. They are supposed to be very weak. Every generation comes with a certain level of energy that these demons, because they are ancient, cannot handle. But now, for them to be able to function effectively, there has to be a sacrifice of a child, of a of someone in that generation. And then they will drink the life force, and they will be able to look even much more pretty. They will, they will, be, they will be renewed and empowered through those sacrifices. Still talking about the blood that you just mentioned now, uh, before you continue, just the essence of the blood, how we see quite a lot of blood sacrifices when, why do, why do we have like blood sacrifices around the beach in a certain time of the morning or certain time of the night? And also, especially here in South Africa or across Africa, you know, when it's Christmas, uh, when it's Easter, people travel home to their villages or to their towns. And then there are accidents like, that's when you get a whole lot of accident. Mm -hmm. And we cannot just say accident is just because of reckless driving or it was because of alcohol consumption. You know, mm -hmm. we somehow we know, we hear that there's a lot of sacrifices. Why around that time? And also, why, why is that important? Now at the beach, because uh, most of these people who are doing well financially, especially in businesses and in politics, or those, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have time to also name the levels because uh there are people who who are in in, in the, okay let me first uh, explain when when you see people sacrificing at the beach they are sacrificing to the marine kingdom because it's the marine kingdom that controls uh the finance the the finances and and politics of this world before you become a president of any country you have to be initiated into the brotherhood and in that brotherhood, you have to represent what your bosses want you to represent. If you fail to represent what they stand for, they will get rid of you by, uh, by empowering the opposition. And uh, they, they have money, they print the money. So there are a few families that are entitled to printing the money. If you try to print the money, even if you're skilled, the police will come for you. So those families that are empowered to print the money, the one who prints the money is the one with power. So now because these people are looking for, for, for power from the marine kingdom, they have to please those spirits by sacrificing, depending on where their altar is. So if, if let's say their altar is at, at the Indian Ocean, they will go to, at the Indian Ocean, and they will sacrifice or they will go to a certain beach where their altar is where the powers that that are the the, the spirits that are empowering them are where their best is and that is where they will do the sacrifice from and uh, what happens is they are the representatives of the kingdom of darkness who are the witches sorcerers and the wizards now depending on uh, who the person has consulted if you have consulted a witch they will they will tell you to to sacrifice within their their within their range within their their area uh, or within their area of operation and if it is a sorcerer also they will ask for a, a sacrifice depending on what you're asking for so the greater the 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 the, the greater the favor the greater the sacrifice now um when we look at witches sorcerers and wizards they are different even as much as they are serving in the kingdom of darkness, they are, they are different in terms of power. Now, a witch is someone who just uh, mix herbs and uh, and uh, a few charms and, and, and use those herbs against mankind and use the herbs again to solve a problem with, with uh, a few demons like traditional spirits, things that are within a, a certain village or a local area. And a sorcerer is uh, again someone who directly has access to the kingdom of darkness he goes to, to to meet with the devil they get assignments from saturn and then they come and they work and most of these sorcerers are in the limelight they are public figures because of the kind of power that they yield and because they are possessed more than the witches 
they will have influence on, on, on the majority of people, on crowds, on social media, they'll have influence. It's not even just about you marketing your, you can, you can invest a lot of money on Facebook and YouTube and all those handles to promote whatever you're representing. But if, if it is not backed up by spiritual power, then, then you, you will be limited. You will not go beyond a certain level. So now what these sorcerers do, you find that because this person is not alone, he's possessed by demons, any place he goes, he doesn't even need to announce. The, those those, uh, those uh, fallen angels will blow the trumpet to mobilize support for that person. If, if it's a politician, he just needs to stand in an area and the entire city will go crazy because he's in that area. People don't know why they will just leave their shops, they would leave their offices, they will just be running after this person, not knowing that this, it's the, the, the powers behind this person that are forcing them to follow them. Like one time, I'll give an example. We were in school and one politician happened to pass, to pass by and we forgot that we were supposed to be in class. We all left whatever we we're doing and we walked. Personally, I, I don't like walking, but I walked for like about two kilometers following this convoy. <laughs> By the time the spell lifted off, off me, I, my legs were hurting. I was very tired. I did not have fare to go back. I started crying and, and some uh, good Samaritans gave me fare to go back home. So there are people who are under spells. They just follow, you know, uh, even in a business. If, if it is a sorcerer that is operating in a certain area in business, it will be difficult to compete with that kind of person because of the power that they have and the influence. These spirits begin to mobilize customers for them. You find that there is a very uh, organized supermarket at the side, and this person just has a very small shop. But because of the powers that that are the, the powers that they are operating with, people will just leave this organized supermarket and begin to line up and fight for this person's products. Even when they are finished, they'll go back home and come back again the following day because mm. this person is not just using his uh, business skills. This person is also using powers. Now, those people go to the, to, the, to the beaches to sacrifice because it is the marine kingdom that empowers all that. It is, it is the marine kingdom that helps them to, to function in that area. And that's why you see a musician singing that you're beautiful like mommy water. They are worshiping mommy water. They are, they, are, they are praising mommy water because it is mommy water that they are covenanted with. Even the false prophets, those that, uh, that are disguising themselves to be uh, servants of God, they go to the marine kingdom and they have covenants. And some of the covenants they have with the enemy uh come with conditions you yes we're that, actually there's quite a bit of uh, a bit of uh, questions here actually uh mm -hmm. that how is the how about false prophets are they not connected to, uh, to the sorcerers there's yeah. uh, i think there's there's quite a few a few a few questions there that how how false prophet prophets rather operate mm -hmm. in the church you know yes. what sort of spirit do they use because we see quite a lot of them across africa now yeah so it's the same with the false prophets. And you see, those false prophets are connected with politicians. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't talk about them and, and, and just live a simple life, you know, mm -hmm. go and eat anywhere and mm -hmm. do anything. They'll begin to come against you with the influence that they have, even in politics. You find, you find them setting you up with crimes and things that, that you have not done. And before you know, mm -hmm. they have silenced you, you're in prison. You, for, for something you have not done because of the influence that they have. Now, this false prophet, the signs that uh, this person is a false prophet is when they are doing things that are not related to the word of God. Like, for example, uh, a, 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 post, a person will tell you that I have this water. Uh, if you use this water specifically, because for them, it's business. It is not ministry. It's right. business. So they will come with oil from Israel, Mm -hmm. Water from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. things they will, they will, they will of course give it a name that is somehow enticing, make you feel like this person is a man Prayer of God. Yes. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then and then what they do is uh, they don't uh, point people to God. Like mm -hmm. when when you pray for someone and and they are delivered and they come to testify, you tell them to to. 
connect their healing or their deliverance to God. But they'll say, I thank the man of God for delivering me, for helping me. It's the man of God now. It's the man of God stealing the show. God is nowhere in the picture. Our man of God. Our, uh -huh. So when you say, <laughs> yeah, when you say things like that, you begin to question this person is ministry. You begin to question their source of power. And then also, most of these uh, miracles and uh, prophecies, most of those things are staged. Something that people don't understand. These things, most of them are staged. They, they have the money, they have the influence. So they can, with money, you can do anything. So if I'm, I've been given like six million, I can come and say, man of God, I thank you so much. I was barren. You prayed for me, man of God. I was barren for six years. I weep. And then they do that. They have, they, you find that in this particular uh, chapel or church, there are certain faces if you observe on camera or oh, every Sunday that person is manifesting with demons. So you're like, ah, how comes other people are being prayed for and they don't come back on Sunday? But this particular person <laughs> is ever falling and, and the cameras are always concentrating on that particular person. The, the only difference, uh, the different thing they do is to change clothes. But other than that, it's the same person falling on 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 from on uh, on a Sunday in January to December. The same individual is falling and manifesting with demons, and uh and and you know uh and when you start to make research on those people that uh, they are putting on cameras, you find that these people after the service they are paid, they are having uh, insurance by the church. You don't talk about those people. If you talk about them, even if you're a minister, they will fire you. And then <laughs> there's so there is so much that is happening now. What happens in these uh, uh, false churches when you go? They, will, they they have secretaries, so they will ask the secretary mm -hmm. to get information. They give you a certain form, and then you fill in your name, you where you're coming from, your 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 work, your job, what you're doing, uh, your age and uh, why, you, why you have visited the church. So you give them the information I, I have come because uh, I, I, I want the man of God to pray for me, for me and my family. Now, those, those uh, forms that you fill in, when they are taken to these false prophets, they select. Now, if you are a member of parliament or you are the chief judge of, of Nigeria or, or, or Uganda or South Africa, or if you are the, the, the CID or, you know, if you have that, that uh, big position, that big job, then uh, there are certain people that they will make you meet. And now if you're selling tomatoes in a market <laughs> or you're selling bananas somewhere by the roadside and you're doing that, that small kind of work, they 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 will they, they will also yes categorize you and they give you the the upcoming ministers to attend to you now these people once they are signed because there is that pre-counseling before you meet with the man of god or the woman of god they you first go for that pre-counseling you meet the ministers there and now when you meet with the ministers there they begin now to ask you, how do you want us to help you? How many children do you have? Uh, what is your problem? So you open up because you've, you've been seeing miracles on TV and you're, you've come with the expectation that your problem is going to be met. Uh, some of the churches, you even have to pay for consultation to meet with this man of God. Yeah. Any church you go to and they're telling you to pay for consultation, run away because salvation and deliverance are supposed to be very... I, 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 think, I think we need to get a special time you know, you and I to talk about these things, <laughs> you know, when it comes to the operation of false prophets and all that. So let's let's concentrate on your story tonight. <laughs> you know, are you where? Yeah. Continue with your story. Yeah. So. Uh, so when I was in Shaker, uh, when I met with the angel of death and he revealed to me uh, what empowers their kingdom through blood sacrifice, how they get empowered. And he told me that what you're going to do, your first assignment here is to cause accidents. And uh, how you cause, when you, when, and he explained to me that every accident you cause and, and people are bleeding, uh, us, we are getting empowered. And even you, you'll be empowered because the spirits that are in you right now, because now they had possessed me with the ancestral spirits. So he told me, it is uh, every time you feel you're weak, you cannot uh, function effectively on that planet where you're going with your grandmother. 
all you need to do is to create an atmosphere where you can you can uh, cause an accident. And when you cause an accident and the blood and the blood begins to get out of these people, you concentrate. And he he taught me how to astral project, how to travel in the spiritual room. And he told me, but when you do this, make sure you're in a safe place where no one can touch you before you come back into your body. Because if a person touches you before you come back into your body, you will not be able to re-enter your body. Your 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 soul will be just roaming around looking for how to enter. And he told me that the same way you get out is the same way you enter. So when you're going yeah. to astral project. You have to make sure that you have speed. You have to make sure that where you are, you are yourself. You have to make sure that uh, you, you're in a place where no one can touch you before you come back into your body. So he taught me how to astral project. And from there, I came back with my grandmother. The same way that we traveled, we were holding hands and we came back to the graveyard. So when we came back at the graveyard, uh we organized greeted some of our relatives and then we went back home but i was now changed my parents had taken me uh, uh to visit my grandmother as a normal child but now they were taking back they were taking home a sorcerer they didn't know that they were having a sorcerer in their house so what i want to tell the parents that don't think children are too young to listen or to understand the gospel Start teaching them the ways of God from as as uh, as far as they start even talking. Start uh, introducing the word of God to them. Let that be their language. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to cast out devils. Don't be sending them to other places so that they can be uh, playing while you're praying. And that's the reason as to why you find many many children from Christian backgrounds uh, are are doing the opposite of what their parents are doing because. When their parents are praying for them, they're in Sunday school playing with dolls and swinging and 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 singing uh, those uh, songs that you know are not even going to enable them grow spiritually. In fact, if uh, I had been taught how to call upon the name of the Lord, if I had been taught the word of God, I don't think my grandmother would have um, initiated me. Uh, successfully but because i was coming from a christian family and on church at every sunday at church uh i would be taken to sunday school to play with dolls and and draw some pictures of uh, a snake and an apple and adam on, and and eve with a snake you know things that are not going to even help me grow spiritually uh, i was very vulnerable to these satanic attacks and that's how they managed to get me so they take me home and uh, I started now hating going to church. Signs that uh, your child is being initiated is a, a change of uh, character. Before I was a very free, I was a very ch a free child. I used to, I used to interact with other children. I was very outgoing. I was very active. Um, I, I, personally, I, I don't want to sit in a place and be there doing nothing. I have to look for something that will enable me be productive. But from the time my grandmother initiated me, I, I became the opposite of who I was. I was like a shadow of myself. And then also, I, all of a sudden, fear entered me because of the things I had seen. I was very scared of everything. I could not even be in a room alone. And at night, I, I stopped sleeping because the, every time sleep would try to come and take me because uh, the body gets tired. But every time I would try to close my eyes and sleep, I would get nightmares. I would see demons strangling me. I would see things. So I was always screaming. I was that child who was always with nightmares. I was ever screaming and running to my parents' bedroom. And then uh, the sicknesses increased. And because I was a brilliant student in, in school, but now because of the power I got, just imagine, you get a gun and you give your child and teach the child how to pull the trigger and uh, and just uh, uh, trust them with that gun. Tell them, go and play with it. When a, fr a friend offends them, of course, because they know how to use the gun and they have not been directed on how to use it, they will just pull the trigger at their friends. So that is how I was. I was now powerful and I began to torture my teachers in school. Um, if a teacher tried to discipline me, let's say maybe I have misbehaved in class, I would wait for them at night when they are sleeping. That's when I would ask for project and beat them. So for them, they are thinking that they are dreaming and beating them. When they wake up in the morning, their eyes are swollen, the hand is swollen, wow. and they wow. know 
they know for a fact that they saw me, but they cannot, they, ca they don't have evidence. And how do you go uh, discussing your student who is about eight years, telling the other teachers that, you know, go slow with that girl, that girl beat me up. She's the reason as to why my eye is swollen. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's like embarrassing. So now <laughs> all the teachers were scared of me. And because of that, they were not helping me, you know, to perform well in class. Whatever I would do, they would just ignore me. They, they were not, every, I felt like uh, even my classmates, they, they started avoiding me. And because of that, my performance began to go down in class. And uh, when, I, when it came to Sundays, because I was coming from a Christian family, it was always a must that we go to church every Sunday. Now, uh, because I was now serving in the kingdom of darkness and yet I'm staying with Christian parents, I, I found it so difficult the first uh, during those first uh, days of my initiation. I felt it so I found it so difficult to be in church because darkness and light cannot fellowship together. I I had started now listening to secular music, watching all kinds of of movies that you know, as long as it has horror in it, I, I would feel comfortable than watching Christian content. You know, my parents used to like watching, uh, you know, uh, go the gospel being preached on TV. Those days we had a, a TV station where they would, you know, play those international ministers uh, preaching. TBN and all those things. So now I would not feel comfortable when my mom is worshiping, my dad is listening to a someone somewhere. I would feel uncomfortable as a child. So what I decided to do, because now the angel of death had taught me how to astral project, I knew that as, as long as I enter church with the demons, I will never be comfortable because the demons cannot stand the presence of God in the church, especially when people are worshiping God in truth and in spirit. And the, yeah. and the pastor is really genuinely preaching the gospel. The demons cannot stand that kind of, of, uh, of environment. So what I would do, I would, I would go to the bathroom or there was a, a place in the church compound where I would go and and uh and i would say it was like un undressing those demons i would i would offload some demons and now be in a position because i'm a human being i can be in any place because god has given me the body that the demons do not have so even if i would be a sorcerer or a witch i would be i would even enter a church comfortably because of the body that god has given me so I need that for me to be comfortable in a church, I need to go somewhere, remove the demons that I have in me and, and pack and stage them somewhere because of the authority God has given us. When you command a demon to do something, it will do it. Even in the kingdom of God, when you command a demon to get out of someone using the name of Jesus, that demon will go because of the authority God has given us. So now with the authority that... Uh, the, I had I had in the kingdom of darkness, I would summon demons and command them to do things and they would obey. So I would tell them, stay here until when I come back. No one moves. And <laughs> surprisingly, if people know the power they have, they wouldn't even be scared of demons. <laughs> they wouldn't be scared of demons. So they would stay there and I would now enter church. Now when I enter church, because I had the ability now to astral project, I would now uh, sit in church, in the congregation, and then now go and astral project and start now working with principalities. Because when 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 Christians begin to pray, the prayer goes to the heavenly places like smoke, and then it turns into fire, depending on, on, on how strong the person is in the spiritual realm. Then it begins to explode. So there are some prayers that the enemy cannot mess with. There are some Christians that Satan knows, if this one is praying, I do not go near that person because they are, because of the level that they are at, the commitment and the, the relationship with God that they have. So there are some Christians that enemy cannot even mess around with because of the influence they have in the spiritual realm. Like uh, uh, when Daniel prayed, the enemy tried to hold the angel, the prince of Persia tried to hold the angel and, and hinder the angel from bringing the message. But because he stayed in that, uh, in that place of prayer, the position he was in, uh, eventually the angel was released and he was able to come and, and give him the message that he had been waiting for. So there are some 
Christians, when they pray, they have to come up with results. There, there has to be an answer, whether the enemy likes it or not. So I let me, I, let me take you back a little bit to your 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 schooling days as a, as a student. There's mm-hmm. a story that you shared about how you used to use other people uh, to mm-hmm. pass your exams. How you yes. recruited, how you recruited a lot of students. How many students? You know, just at the from your head, how many students do you think you recruited, you initiated into the cult? I initiated 996 students, but uh, when I was in primary, I, I wasn't so much concentrating on initiating because I didn't know how far uh, the, the power I had could, you know, like I, like you have power, but you don't know what you can use the power for. So mm. what I would do as a child, I would just aff- afflict my other students, cause pain. You know, make them fear me and respect me. If you report me to the teacher and I have done something bad, I will do something to you and you live in fear. <laughs> so uh, even the teachers. Now, when I became, when I was 11 years, again, that is again when I was initiated deeper into the things of darkness because it is a stage. You go into stages. Getting initiated into Satanism is easy, but coming out is the most difficult bit. That's why I wouldn't encourage anyone to to engage themselves into covenants because some people don't even have the opportunity to get out of those covenants. It is it is a matter of life and death. And me, I don't take it lightly that God had mercy on me. So uh, I just encourage whoever is not into any covenant to just keep that personal relationship with God and, and, and not to allow anything come in between their, their relationship with God because uh, I know I know how special that relationship with God is uh, from from the from this side of experience. They say experience is is the best teacher. A person who gets something easily will not value it, but if if you get it after struggling, then you begin to value it. I I getting delivered. It took me three good years of of pain, demons cutting my body. I was on ropes. Uh, because I was always possessed, I would not sit in a in a in a car without uh, people on on. I would if I were to enter a vehicle, they had to get strong men on every side to hold me because demons would be telling me to jump out of the car when when they are driving. Uh, it, it was it was painful. It was a painful experience until when God 